Hi. Um, yeah, so hi, I'm James. I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the um, use cases we have for literal mappings and some of the issues that we have with it and um, how that relates back to SSSOM. Um, so the motivation for looking into this is that SSOM, as it stands, um, formalizes mappings from identifiers to other identifiers. Um, and it's really is doing amazing work there because that's something that has never been um, formally specified apart from in ontologies, you get these little uh, mapping cross references and things that don't mean a huge amount. So SSOM gives you the vocabulary to talk about mappings um, and the file formats and the tooling. Um, but mappings from identifiers to other identifiers are, are one problem and mappings from free text to identifiers is a very different problem indeed. Um, mapping from free text isn't easy. You can have, um, there's lots of different names for the same thing. Uh, sometimes these are listed as synonyms and ontologies, but not always. Um, you've got problems with language in general, like different conjugations and word endings that need to be handled um, and different languages. Um, so the, the mapping is also context dependent. So the same thing, depending on who you are, can the same string can mean something very different and you want to map it to a different identifier. Um, so at EBI, we have expert curators who are specifying these mappings. They're manually going through and saying, well, this, this string um, should map to this term in this ontology. Um, and every time they map something, they're generating data because that's a really important, useful bit of information is that this human domain expert has created this mapping. Um, but there's no standard representation for this. So we've got databases full of these kind of, um, these, these manually created mappings and um, we, we end up writing tools to work with them, but they're all uh, very um, specified individually to each, for each project. Um, so for example, this is from our GWAS project at EBI. Um, and this is a, a real example of some data um, where that's been manually curated. So we've got the text strings on the left, and then we've got the, um, the context, which uh, is defined to be, which can define things like the branch of the ontology we want to look in. Um, and then the mapped label and the mapped identifier. Um, so yeah, each project, again, has, they've all got different contexts. So they, they want to map to different sets of terms um, and they come up with all these sophisticated methods to do so. So um, at EBI, um, we've got various tools to work with these string to term mappings. One of them is Zuma. Um, and Zuma allows you to, you can give it a set of terms and you can tell it which ontologies to look in and which projects to use as data sources. And then it will come back and it'll give you some uh, ideas for what those strings could map to. Um, and it gives varying confidence. Uh, high confidence means that this has actually been an expert, expert curated mapping from a human curator. Um, and then lower confidence results come back from things like lexical matching. Um, and then the data generated by ontology curators feeds back into Zuma, so Zuma gets better over time. We've also now, more recently, we're developing this manual uh, semi-automated mapping tool that enables manual and automated curation. So a curator can import their terms from CSV into onto string, um, and then onto string will predict mappings based on what it uses Zuma as a data source. It uses the ontology lookup service. Um, and it guesses a mapping um, and then you can, the curator can then go through and say, actually, yeah, this auto mapping is a really good one. Um, or no, I, I'm not so sure about this. I actually want to map it to something else. Uh, and eventually we want this data to inform the mapping so that again, it'll improve over time, but uh, we don't have a standard data representation to do that. So um, we need this standard format to manage and publish things to turn mapping data sets, as I was saying, but um, actually, there's loads of use cases for this. I think um, lots of people here will be interested as well. Um, it can be things like what we do, which is mapping data from studies to ontologies, um, but also mining the literature. Um, so assigning terms to text extracted from papers. So that can be things like uh, using NLP approaches, and then you want to ground the results of those into ontologies. Um, I was thinking about maybe we could apply some of this to the output of large language models, which are very top, topical at the moment. Um, and also the, this, these data sets can be used to improve ontologies because you're, um, they're telling you what people actually call things and what things are called out in the, in, in the wild, um, which is really useful data in itself. So how can we publish this? And, and um, hopefully using SSSOM. 
Um, so we've been working on a proposal which will extend SSSOM. And um, we don't just want to keep uh, mashing more columns onto the SSSOM uh, TSV format. It's already got like lots of different things you can specify, but they're mostly about subject uh, terms, whereas this is about literals, um, which are a, a, a different thing to deal with. Um, so we've come up with a new profile, which is based on what's already specified in SSSOM, um, but we've added some more specific fields for literals and we've taken out the things that don't make sense anymore. And we've got this open as a pull request on, uh, on GitHub. Um, so this is the original uh, entity mapping profile from SOM. So you can specify some, the, some of these are required and then the others are just useful things that you can specify if, if they're pertinent. Um, and the, the, the meat of this proposal is that we've taken all of these uh, subject related um, properties and these are gone in our literal model and we've replaced them with uh, literal and literal data type instead of subject um, label and subject category. Um, and that applies to the, to the provenance information and the pre-processing fields. Nearly everything else remains the same. So these are, these are shared uh, across the two different profiles. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, certainly for us, um, having this, this profile in SSOM, I, think it's, it, I don't think there's a better place for the profile to live. Um, and I think it would be really useful um, to have these string to term mappings formally specified for the first time. So I'm looking forward to having some discussions and gathering some requirements at this workshop, um, which is the first thing I wanna do. Um, and then, We'd really like to start getting some of that data that we've been collecting at EBI, uh, make it accessible using this new uh, SOM profile as a community resource. Um, and in the long term, we'd like to integrate this new SSOM literal profile as the, the core of these tools for their, their internal data model. Thank you. Are we doing questions at the end or is it per? Yeah. Okay, uh, David. Uh, what kind of predicates might be useful here? Because when you've got two clearly defined concepts in ontologies, then understanding whether something is broader or narrower, you've got standard reference. Whereas with a literal, you just sort of sniff in the air and say, I guess within this community, this is sort of used to mm. mean exactly this or broadly that or... Yeah, I, th I think that the... So if you... The, the important thing is going to be how was that mapping generated? So if it was just done by doing um, a lookup in, in OLS, for instance, and you've got an exact match, um, then you want to be able to indicate, yeah, well, I just searched and this is the label of something in an ontology. Um, whereas if it was expertly curated, that's, that's information you want to have as well, like it was expertly curated by this person. And that's more provenance than predicates, but yeah. I, but we don't really, um, I mean, going back to the profile. Oh, I can't go back to the profile. Um, did we even have predicates in the proposal? I can't remember. It's not up on the screen anymore, but. Yeah, so uh, I think that it's a, a great question. So we have kind of mixed these uh, predicate question a little bit together. So SCOS is actually slightly out of scope for literal mappings as predicates. But you can imagine something like, for example, the similar to the Obo and Owl um, uh, predicate precision for synonyms, using something like that as a vocabulary. But perhaps we need to build a separate set of predicates specifically for that. But we that's a good question that hasn't been addressed yet. So maybe a small control vocabulary would be more appropriate for the string to term. Okay, great. Yeah, we can look at that. All right, I think we get a question from the back. Uh, Devil's Advocate, does this belong in SSOM at all? Um, if I download a, a file and I now I have to decide oh, what kind of mappings are inside it, like do I look for fields for entity mappings or maybe I have to look for fields for literal mappings? How do I deal with this? Is this simple anymore? Presumably if you download the file, you know how you intend to use it. Um, but the, the um, 
I mean, there, there are two different profiles which would be handled, which would be specified separately. So it's, um, but I don't think there's any, like, I mean, technically you could separate them, but then you wouldn't get the community momentum that comes with having these in the same, um, like, it's taken us so long to get together this critical mass of people who care about mappings. Um, and I don't think there's really a better place for this to be, uh, to be um, realized. Because otherwise, I mean, if, if we went off and built something at EBI, it would just be another EBI project, right? So if, but this, we really have the community together and we're thinking about mappings. And I think that that's the opportunity to get this stuff formalized. Okay, we can. Thank you. So I'm wondering. I, I mean, I think I think it could be in um, scope for SSSOM, but I'm sort of thinking about the future things. You know, the, the example that was given with tibia. You know, if you map like a string literal from some specific source, you know that mapping is clear. But how will you use that more broadly? Like when you find tibia in different literal locations, like. What's the use? I mean, yeah, but that's exactly the use case for this um, because that is why mappings are data. Um, like the, the mapping itself uh, captures is so dependent on context. It's dependent on the person that made the mapping. Um, so it needs to come with all of that metadata to say like these are the kind of mappings that make sense from the perspective of somebody who works on Drosophila. Um, like as opposed to somebody who works on plants, like the, you've got um, all of this metadata needs to be attached to the mapping set, and this is the kind of thing that we're already looking at in SSOM with the the headers, uh, the metadata from the headers and things. And I think that transfers really nicely over to literal mappings, um, because terms term mappings are also context dependent. So. Yeah. 